Hello. This short video is about computing trace and ORM and the inverses in a specific Galois extension. That will be an example of a cyclotomic Galois extension of conductor 6. So that is the result of attaching all roots of degree 6 to the rational numbers, all roots of more. Well, we know that it is enough to attach just one of them, say uh, this one, 2 pi i over 6, which is an uh, easier way, 2 pi i over 3, the argument of. The minimal polynomial of this uh, root of unity is the cyclotomic polynomial number 6. We need the minimal polynomial to describe effectively the elements in this field. So the minimal polynomial is uh, the cyclotomic of um, level 6, and that is by uh, the induction process the ratio of t to the 6 minus 1 to the product of all smaller cyclotomic polynomials. Smaller in the multiplicative sense, so the labels have to be devices, proper devices of 6, not equal to 6. And if we remember what they are, so this, together with this, will give us t to the... Again, this together with this will give us t cube minus 1, and the, the second is t plus 1. So dividing uh, th this factor into the numerator will leave us with t cube plus 1. And then doing this division, we could um, again use um, a, a form of um, geometric progression and get t squared minus t plus 1. So that is uh, explicitly the minimal polynomial, the cyclotomic polynomial level 6. It is quadratic, the degree of this extension uh, of rationals is 2, so um, we have two coordinates and the basis is just the basis of 1 and epsilon, for example. So we have a complete description as combinations of 1 and epsilon with rational coefficients. So now we, okay, um, we're going to compute the symmetry group of this extension, which is not going to be larger than 2, but it's going to be actually equal in size to 2. So that will be a color extension, of course. And then using the symmetry group, we will compute the trace and the norm and the inverses. So the symmetry group, again, we talked about it generically, it is um, isomorphic, naturally labeled by invertible integers mod 6. And we have two such. We have, of course, one, but then we have the class of five. I'll just write them as integers. So that is as a group, a cyclic group of order two, of course. And the interesting non-trivial element is the automorphism labeled by 5, which is completely determined by what it does to uh, the non-trivial basis element, and it is raised to the fifth power. And the fifth power is really the same as negative power, negative first. So this effectively is a complex conjugation um, acting on those complex numbers. It leaves these numbers um, uh, closed, so it becomes an automorphism of this extension. So this is just um, the incarnation of complex conjugation. Well, uh, we will be better off knowing what this uh, inverse is in terms of uh, the um, uh, allowed template for our numbers. So let's remember what um, we knew about the epsilon. Uh, epsilon squared minus epsilon plus 1 was equal to 0. That was this 
um, statement that uh, that is the annihilation polynomial function. And that can be turned into the answer for epsilon inverse. We can just take this equation and multiply by um, epsilon inverse throughout. So we'll have epsilon minus 1 plus epsilon inverse all equal to 0. And that gives us effectively the answer for the for epsilon inverse. It is just these two put on other side, it will be 1 minus epsilon. That is a form which is uh, our chosen presentation for elements in the extension. So we know how to conjugate um, algebraic conjugate uh, non-trivial one of our um, basis element. So let's see how it conjugates the rest. Well, it's kind of easy uh, on any which is the same as inverse. Maybe I'll just call it um, maybe I'll call it inverse. So it is the same. The index is really mod 6. So that is um, not doing anything to A. Uh, that symmetry is not doing anything to B because it cannot be checked. It, it just changes epsilon to 1 minus epsilon. So the net effect will be combining again um, uh, into this template form. Combining the pieces we will have A plus B and then minus B epsilon. So that is the um, um, form of the symmetry on the generic element. Now we can, can, can compute the trace as the sum of the element and its um, algebraic conjugate. And uh, when the dust settles, we have the answer which is manifestly an element of the rational numbers, as it should be. Uh, we also can compute the, the norm. Now it is a product. And um, yeah, it's just uh, using the uh, arithmetic operations in our field. Um, easy arithmetic operations, multiplication and addition. We get A with A plus B. And then we will have um, 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 b squared with negative sign as a coefficient for epsilon squared. So what is epsilon squared? Again, epsilon squared is coming from this. Uh, that is the base of arithmetic, uh, reducing down to the linear by uh, writing epsilon squared as epsilon minus 1. So that is epsilon minus 1, and then we have gross products uh, b, a plus b for epsilon, and then negative a, b for epsilon. So then let's see how can we simplify it. Well, we have a squared, we have a, b uh, as coefficients for just 1, and then we have negative 1 with negative b squared, so positive b squared altogether, and then the rest is just comes as a coefficient for epsilon. So that is all for the one term, and then for, for the epsilon term we have um, um, b a here, and then b squared here, and then uh, a b here, which cancels with b a because it comes with negative sign, and then b squared cancels uh, out the negative b squared, so we end up with zero. Um, started writing, but I really just had to cross it. So that is the norm, that is just the uh, um, quadratic function. The degree of the norm as a function, as a polynomial function, is always the degree of the extension, you can see it immediately. And that is a quadratic function which computes the norm, and again by the sheer nature of it as a uh, being a product it is never zero, so this is a rational number, and it is not zero. Really, the norm again is a multiplicative group homomorphism. Non-zero elements go to non-zero elements, so non-zero means that either a, no, either a or b is non-zero. It's just not 
both are zero. And now we can write down the formula for the inverse by taking the conjugate, again the only conjugate we have, which is non-trivial one, uh, which is exactly this one, and dividing it by the uh, norm. And we can write it in the very template we are working in by separating the coefficient for 1 and the coefficient for epsilon. So that is, um, that is the whole complete arithmetic in the field. Now we have recorded four operations. Um, now we didn't really record the operation of multiplication. We just use this reduction rule, but we can, of course. And uh, here we have a compact formula for computing the inverse to a number in this cyclotomic field. Uh, more examples are to come. See you later.